Hey there, it's CJ Willis, and today I'm cracking a pack. I'm back with pack number three in my Magic the Gathering Zendikar Rising bundle. The focus of the video is, what is your pick? As I crack the pack, I will discuss which card would be my pack one, pick one. My viewpoint will be from a very casual Magic the Gathering player perspective. It will not be a pro tour grinder or even a Friday night Magic grinder take. It will be a kitchen table draft, having fun with friends' opinion. Check out the preview video on my Zendikar Rising bundle. I have added the link to the preview video in the description below. Let's get to cracking pack number three. Fissure Wizard, 2 mana, 1 on a red, Goblin Wizard at 2-1. When Fissure Wizard enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Fissure Wizard is a good card to play either earlier in the game or later in the game. It's a rummaging goblin, so you can pitch a land you don't need and hopefully draw into some gas. Cascade Seer, 4 mana, 3 and a blue, Merfolk Wizard at 3-3. Three, three. When Cascade Seer enters the battlefield, scry X, where X is the number of creatures in your party. In Limited, Cascade Seer was a very cuttable card. You would draft it if you had enough creatures to make up party, but it isn't as impactful as you'd like it to be. Expedition Healer, 2 mana, 1 on a white, Core Cleric at 2-2. Two, two. As Vigilance, Expedition Healer has lifelink as long as you control another cleric. It feeds into the life gain, life loss mechanic that the white-black deck has centered around clerics. The mana Skitter Sneak, 4 mana, 3 and a black, Human Rogue at 3-4. As long as an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard, Nemana Skitter Sneak gets plus 1, plus 0, and has Menace. In Limited, I like this card quite a bit in the blue-black mill deck. A 4-4 four, four Menace is pretty hard to deal with. Tajuro Blightblade, single green mana, Elf Rogue at 1-1, one, one, has Death Touch. In Limited, this is a card that I like quite a bit. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you can't play it on turn one. Once it's on the battlefield, it really clogs up the ground game. Skyclave Sentinel, three generic mana, artifact creature Gargoyle at 2-3. It has Kicker of four generic mana. It's a flyer, has Defender. If Skyclave Sentinel was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. As long as Skyclave Sentinel has plus one plus one counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. I think this card is a lot better than it appears on face value. If you slot it into a deck like the black green plus one plus one counters deck, for three mana you can have a three four flyer, which is pretty good. Expedition Champion, 3 mana, 2 and a red, Human Warrior at 2-3. Expedition Champion gets plus 2, plus 0, as long as you control another warrior. In a dedicated warrior deck, either white-red, red-black, Expedition Champion is pretty good as a 4-3 for 3. Vanquish the Weak, 3 mana, 2 and a black, instant, destroy target creature with power 3 or less. One of the better black common removal spells. Vanquish the Weak is great because it can take out an early threat. Seagate Colossus, 7 generic mana. Artifact creature Golem Warrior at 7-5. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature in your party. On face value, this looks pretty cool because you're thinking, well, I'll probably be able to cast it for 5 mana. From my experience, this card doesn't have evasion, can be chump blocked pretty easy, and in limited, there's plenty of destroy artifact or creature spells that can take care of Seagate Colossus. Ghoul Draz Mucklord, 3 mana, 2 on a black, Crocodile at 2 3. When Ghoul Draz Mucklord dies, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control. Ghoul Draz Mucklord doesn't quite fit in as well because you really need it to die to be able to get a plus one, plus one counter on another creature. It's probably your 23rd playable card, or you may even end up cutting it. First uncommon is Relic Axe, two generic mana, artifact equipment. When Relic Axe enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two, plus one instead. Equip for two generic mana. Relic Axe is okay. Plus one, plus one for two generic mana, I suppose. With a warrior, plus two, plus one. It's an uncommon that I think just doesn't quite get there.
Roiling Regrowth, 3 generic mana, 2 and a green, instant. Sacrifice a land, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. In a landfall deck, this card is a blowout. It allows you to do so many landfall shenanigans during combat. It's definitely a card that you want to draft to put in your landfall based deck. Final uncommon is Zoff Consumption, 6 mana, 4 and 2 black. Sorcery, each opponent loses 4 life and you gain 4 life. This is one of our modal double faced cards. Zoff Consumption on the front side doesn't seem to be too impactful, but later in the game it can make a big difference if you're a little bit lower on life and you're in a little more controlling deck. It can give you that padding to make it to your end game. The transform side is off consumption is a land that enters the battlefield tapped in a pinch if you need black land you can play it and have it ready for your next turn okay well we get a great rare or mythic rare in this pack we have legion angel four mana two and two white angel warrior at four three when legion angel enters the battlefield you may reveal a card you own named legion angel from outside the game and put it into your hand. In limited, it's going to be absolute Christmas land if you get a second Legion Angel. Aside from that, a 4-3 flyer for four is value and it can close out the game. It'll be a flying threat that your opponent has to deal with. Then we have a full art planes and one of the double face modal checklist cards. My pack one pick one is going to be Roiling Regrowth. I think it's a fantastic card. It could be the card that you take pack one pick one and then you focus on a landfall based deck. It's also great to go and get that mana that you're splashing or it can mana ramp you into your bigger, better spells. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Take some time to tell me in the comment section what was your favorite card or the best card out of the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack pack number four from my Magic the Gathering Zendikar Rising Bundle in What is Your Pick?